Hi you guys! Welcome to my channel. If you're new here, hi, my name is Chaney and I'm a homeschooling mom to three kids ages 12, 5, and 1. And today I'm going to be participating in the collab with Jessica from the Waldock Way and Abby from Rooted in Rest. And today I'm going to be talking about homeschool mom self-care. So this is a topic that is probably very the nearest and dearest of all of the topics in this collab. Uh, and that is because I am not very good at self-care. It's very true. I am notoriously terrible at putting myself dead last in the tier list of who to take care of. But I'm going to do my best to try to share with you some of the things that I have learned over my years of both homeschooling and homemaking motherhood because the whole thing is a vibe. There are two things I think I, I want to share with you that have been the most important to me, for me, personally. And they're very, very simple things in theory, but in practice for me they have been the most powerful habits that I have gotten into to keep my mental health afloat. <laughs> uh, I'm not sure about the other women in this collab, but I personally very heavily struggled with postpartum depression and it can be a very, very dark time. And so when people give you self-care advice where they're like, oh, you know, make sure that you go out on a date once a month or um, you know, go, go shopping by yourself or, you know, go get your hair done. Uh, they sound great and thanks, but when you're struggling with mental health, they're not very helpful tips because it's a deeper issue than that. And sometimes it's not financially feasible, especially when you're a one-income household or, you know, you only have a part-time income or you've got children to feed, everyone needs something. Um, I often, it's not even an option for me to leave the house. And I fortunately have had a better experience after my daughter, but after my middle son in particular, I struggled with postpartum depression for a very, very long time. And so these are the two things uh, that I did, aside from going to therapy. Let's, let's, actually let's throw that out there. Go to therapy. I went to therapy, confession time, again. Uh, I went to therapy and I learned a lot of coping skills for my particular situation. So if that is something that you're struggling with, I would highly, highly encourage it. It did help and the two habits that I picked up since then are the things that I have maintained since then and I really think they're one of the things that have saved me from falling back into that dark depressive hole that I was in after I gave birth to my son. And those two things, number one is shower every day. Shower every day. Now, sometimes I just pull my hair back and I get in and I stand under the water and I get back out. And I did that a lot when I first started. Um, but shower every day, even if it's fast, even if all you're doing is rinsing your body off, shower every day. You would not believe how much that five minutes under the steaming hot water and exhaling, like just stand under the water and breathe for five minutes and then go back out there. It seems like such a small thing, but it does so much for your mental health to have that five minutes of reset time. I'm not going to tell you to go get your hair done. I'm not going to tell you to go buy a new outfit or, you know, buy bath bombs and take a bubble bath. Just get in the shower. Let the hot water run over you and get back out. And I promise you that you'll feel better. Just find a time of day at some point where you can throw your hair up and get in the shower and you know 
as you go on, the more habitual it will get, the more you're like, I have to go take a shower. I have to go take a shower. I have to go take a shower. It becomes a compulsory thing, but it, it really is one of the best forms of self-care that you can structure yourself to do, and it will make you feel better. I promise you. Even if when you're first starting to do it, like I was first starting to do it, it felt like when I get back out, I'm just going back into the noise. And I understand that. And if you're there, I feel you. And I'm, I, I feel you. I hear you. I know your struggle. Uh, but that five minutes of loud water running noises <laughs> to help dull the senses a little bit and, and just breathe. It really will do wonders for your mental health. The second tip that I'm going to give you is another simple thing, but it is give yourself grace. Give yourself grace. We, I think everyone on the planet at the end of the day runs through the list of things that they did that day that maybe they didn't do very well. And I think that mothers, particularly postpartum mothers, have this heightened critic that lives in their head that's constantly telling you you didn't do enough, you yelled too much, you were cruel. If you have a difficult relationship with a parent, then there's a part of your brain that's saying, you know, you're just like that parent, you're just like that parent, or um, maybe there's some other person um, another type of another mom that you know that I, I am I the only one like I I've known other people who said to them there's like the one mom that's like the bad mom and when you have a particularly hard day your brain is like you're just like that mom you're just as terrible as that one mother right and it's it's such a terrible thing that we do to ourselves but we do it so at the end of the day give yourself grace stop her Tell her to shut up, right? And it's not true. And you know that it's not true. And I want you to get into the habit at the end of the day of giving yourself the same grace that you give to your children when they make mistakes. So at the end of the day, when you hear that tiny, that, that other mother inside of you telling you what a terrible mother you are because you haven't lived up to this impossible standard that this other mother has set for you, I want you to take a step back and give yourself grace. I want you, if, if prayer is something that you do, I want you to pray for you. I want you to pray for you. I want you to push everything and everyone else aside and I want you to pray for you and that you can show yourself grace. That you can forgive yourself for what you did today. That you can learn from what you did today and that you can be better tomorrow and cycle through it's it's fine to go over that situation where you yelled at your kid and it you know you feel like it wasn't your fault or that was a really big reaction and you shouldn't have reacted that way it's okay fine it's okay to acknowledge that maybe you didn't do the best but you didn't do the worst either. And it's okay to acknowledge that too. So when you're really upset about, uh, my children don't live in a four story house, fine. But do they live on the streets? No? Then you're doing better than some, you know? You've given them shelter. So give yourself grace. Are you working to make it better? Yes? So give yourself grace. Are you working to keep food on the table? Yes, give yourself grace. Are your children happy? Are they happy? Do they smile? Do they laugh? Did they laugh today? Today on the day that you think you've made this horrible, irrevocable mistake that they're never going to forgive you for because you fed them chicken nuggets instead of making them a home cooked meal. Did they smile? Are they healthy? Are they happy? Yes, give yourself grace. I promise you, even now, giving myself grace is something that is very difficult. Judging myself is something that I still struggle with on a daily basis. 
even getting on this platform and talking is something that is very difficult for me to do because that other mother inside of me is loud and she's mean you guys she's really mean but I would encourage you to put her in her place because you deserve grace too and that is going to be the end of my video today I hope that something that I said in this video was able to help you um, this is probably the most personal video that I've ever done and um, I hope that it reached who it needed to reach when it needed to reach it and I hope that in some small way I could help you be happier on a semi-regular basis more often Thank you for watching this video, and I will see you next time. Bye.